Now let's uh, continue our discussion regarding the principle of work and energy. Uh, we said that uh, in order to understand the principle of work and energy, it was very important uh, to remember how to uh, determine the work that has been done by a force. Uh, so if I have this path here, the initial position is S1 and the final position is S2, and I have a particle, uh, and that part we have a forces acting on that particle and uh, as a result I have displacement the uh, particle is going to be displaced from uh, one position to another we learn that a work will be done by the force and we learn how to determine that uh, work and uh, we said that we are going to use the uh, equation of motion in order to uh, uh, develop another equation that is going to help us to uh, have relation between the uh, velocity and the forces. So here is the equation of motion. Uh, the force is going to be uh, equivalent to the moment times the acceleration. Here, for example, that force, if I'm going to have the uh, component into x and into y, uh, this component is tangent and this one is normal. The tangent one is not going to cause any work because it's going always to be uh, perpendicular to the direction of the displacement. So uh, uh, the uh, force vector is going to equal the moment time the acceleration. And uh, we know that we have another expression for the acceleration from the kinematic equation, uh, ADS equal VDV. And uh, I'm going to substitute the value of uh, uh, AT with that expression here. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put uh, uh, VDV over uh, DS. And then I can put DS into the left hand uh, side. I'm going to have the force, which is tangent to the, uh, the, the path. It's going to be in the same direction of the displacement. DS equal MV DV. And like we learned from the, uh, uh, the previous lecture, the FDS represent the uh, uh, increment of the uh, work, du. So FDS represent du. And of course, that force, it should be in the same direction of the uh, displacement. So this part is going to cause the increment of the work. And if, if I'm going to know, if I do want to know the work that has been done from the uh, position one to position two, I need to integrate. So in order to get the uh, uh, work uh, between 1 and 2, I need to integrate uh, from 1 to 2. I need to integrate that uh, uh, value here, FDS. Again, the value of the force, it should be the same direction of the uh, displacement. Then uh, I need also to uh, integrate the other part uh, from uh, V1 to V2. Uh, uh, as a result, I'm going to have uh, the direction, the integration of this part is the uh, uh, work done from point one to point two. And from the previous lecture, we learned how to determine uh, uh, U one two. And regarding the integration of this part, I'm going to end up with one over two m v two squared minus one over two m one uh, uh, m v one uh, squared. So we call this the principle of work and energy. This equation is a principle of work and energy. So what does it mean? So uh, 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 if I'm going to have the position one, at position one, I have mass and I have velocity. So uh, T1 represent one over two m, uh, m1 squared, the velocity at position one while t2 this part here so i'm going to call this part t1 and this part t2 this part represent the status of the particle at position two i need to know uh, the uh, velocity at position two so i have t1 and t2 t1 represent the status at position one and this one represent the status at position two and this magnitude here 
we are gonna uh, give it a name. We are gonna call it kinetic energy of the particle. So the work done between uh, position one and position two is the difference between the kinetic energy at position two minus the kinetic energy at position one. And the kinetic energy is one over two m uh, uh, v squared. T1, we need to determine the kinetic energy at position one, and here the kinetic energy uh, at position two for the particle. And we need to know some points about the kinetic energy. Uh, it's a scalar, which means that it doesn't have any direction, and the unit is the same as the work, joule or foot pound, if you are working with you as customary. And the value is associated with the status of the object. So uh, at position one, it depends on the velocity at position one. And in position two, it depends on the velocity at the position two. So it depends on the status of the particle. And also, uh, it cannot be negative. It cannot be negative. So the value here is a zero or positive uh, value. So instead of uh, putting the equation like that, instead of one over two m v two squared, I could put t two, the kinetic energy at position two. And here, instead of this, I'm gonna put t uh, one, the uh, kinetic energy at position one. So instead of this, I'm gonna say that uh, the summation of the work that has been done from point one to point two is the difference between the uh, uh, is the difference in kinetic energy between position two and position one. Or sometimes I could say that T1 plus uh, the uh, summation of the work that has been done between position one and, and position two is going to be the kinetic energy at uh, uh, position two. Uh, it's very important equation and is going to relate the, like you can see here, the velocities with the forces. The equation of motion relate the uh, forces with the uh, acceleration, while this one here is going to relate the uh, uh, forces with the velocities. So let's see example here in order to learn how to use the uh, pr uh, principle of work and energy. So here we have a block, like you can see here, the weight uh, the mass of that block is 10 kilograms. So the, the weight, of course, is going to act down, and that block is attached to a spring. So we have a spring here, which is attached to that block. And also we have applied force equal 100 Newton. And here we have an inclined surface along which the, the block is going to move. And here they said that when the value of S is 0 0.6 meter, so the value of S here, so uh, if I'm going to measure from here, when the value of S equal 0 0.6, so when that S equal uh, 0 0.6, they say that the spring is not stretched or compressed. That means the spring here is not either uh, stretched or compressed. So when S equals 0 0.6, that mean here is the uh, unstretched position. So unstretched position at S equals 0 0.6. Remember, when you are going to deal with the spring, here is your reference. So S here is going to be 0 when you are going to deal with uh, uh, spring, the work of a spring. So we need to remember this. Otherwise, you are going to make mistake. So we are not going to measure S from here. So the value of S in the equation of the work that has been done by the spring, uh, the reference, the zero is here. And uh, we have initial uh, velocity, we have speed here, equal five meter per second down the smooth plane. So we have uh, uh, initial velocity here, equal five meter per second. We need to know the distance S, the value of S measured from here, when the block stops. So the block is going to move a certain distance, and then they are going to stop at some point here. We need to know the value of, of S from here to here. 
like you can see here, we have forces and we have velocities and we have displacement. In that case, we are going to apply the principle of work and energy in order to determine the value of S. Because in, in the equation of the principle of work on energy, I have relation between the uh, displacement and the velocities and the forces, not like the equation of motion. So uh, we are going to apply the principle of work and energy between position one. Uh, position one is going to be here, where the value of S is 0 0.6 meter, and position two, we don't know the position two, but at position two, this, the, the velocity is going to be zero because the block is going to stop. And here is the equation of the principle of work and energy. We have kinetic energy at position one and kinetic energy at position two. I can, I, I can uh, determine the value of T1. T1 is one over two times the mass times the initial velocity. We know the uh, mass and we know the initial velocity. Uh, similarly, I can determine the value of T2. Uh, it's going to be 1 over 2 m v2 squared. And the value of uh, 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 v2 here is going to be 0 because we need to determine the position when the block is going to stop. So I can determine T1, I can determine T2. Now I need to know the work that is going to be done from position 1 to position 2. And we have three forces uh, regarding the, 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 the work. So the work is done by three different forces. I have the applied forces, I have the weight, and I have the spring. So let's start with the applied forces. Now, like you can see here, the applied forces in the same direction of the displacement. And that means the work is going to be uh, positive. Uh, then we need to know the displacement. The displacement is going to be S2 minus S1, the displacement, because originally, the block was at S1 here. So displacement is going to be S2 minus S1. And the uh, work done is going to be positive. So regarding the work done by the force, it's going to be positive and it's going to be 100 newtons times the difference, uh, times the displacement, which is the difference between S2 and S1. S2, we don't know S2, but we do know S1. Then we need to determine the work done by the weight. Remember, we said that the weight, the work done by the weight, is going to be minus W times the uh, dy, the difference in y. So the block originally was here, then it's going to move there, and it's going to stop. So I need to know that distance here. So if the displacement in this direction is S2 minus S1, that means the component in y this is going to be S2 minus S1 uh, uh, sine 30. So uh, uh, we are going to say that the uh, work done by the weight is going to be the weight times the dy. And dy here, is it acting upward or downward? This time, uh, dy is acting downward. And we say that if it's acting downward, uh, it's mean that the work done by the weight is going to be positive. So uh, another method, you can say that the work, uh, the, the, the weight is down and the displacement is, is down. That means that this direction is going to be positive because the direction of the weight is the same as the uh, displacement. The displacement here is going to be S2 minus S1 sine 30. So this one is S2 minus S1 and the component in Y is going to be S2 minus S1 sine 30 and it's going to be positive. The uh, mass is 10 kilograms and I need to multiply it by the gravity which is 9.81. I'm going to end up with this one. So I have a positive work here and I have also positive work there. Finally I have the work done by the spring. We know that the work done by the spring should be negative because the displacement is going to be here and the spring is going to push back. So before that uh, uh, remember uh, the, in or, the value of S in order to, he, here is the equation to determine the uh, uh, work done between uh, point one and point two. And we, we need to remember that the S here is not like the S here. The S here is going to start at the unstretched position. Okay, and the un unstretched position is going to be here. 
So any stress position here, the value of S is going to be zero. Because when S is 0 0.6 uh, meters, uh, we don't have any uh, compression or the, the, the spring is not either stretched or compressed. So S1 here is zero. Then what about S2? Here is a reference and S2 should be there. At that point, the position is S equals 0 0.6. That means uh, S2 here is going to be uh, uh, S2, the S2, that one here, minus 0 0.6. So S2 in that equation is going to be S2, which measure from there, minus 0 0.6, because we need to determine the same S2. Okay, so since this one is going to be zero, so I'm going to end up only with that part. So I'm going to have minus 0 0.5, 200, the uh, uh, constant of the spring, times S2 minus 0 0.6, because S2 here is going to be measured from the uh, any stretch length. Again, S here is not like the, the same as S there. You need to take care of that. Otherwise, you are going to make a mistake. Now, we determine the uh, summation of the work that has been done between position one and position two. I have positive work because of the force, positive work because of the weight, and negative uh, work because of the spring. And uh, regarding the uh, uh, normal force, the normal force, since it's, per it's perpendicular to the direction of the displacement, uh, is not going to cause any work. So now I'm in position to use that formula. We, I have all of this, this one plus this one plus this one, and T1 is going to be one over two times the mass, which is 10, times the initial velocity, which is five. So one over two, T1 is going to be one over two times 10 times uh, five squared. T2, since the velocity here is going to be zero, so this part is going to be zero. So in order to apply that formula here, T1, like I said, is going to be 0 0.5 times the mass times the initial velocity, which is five meters per second. Uh, this part represents the summation of the work that has been done by all forces. Here I have the work has been done by the applied force. Here I have the work that has been done by the weight, and here the work that has been done by the spring. And the value of T2 equals zero, because the velocity here is zero, because we need to know uh, uh, when uh, the block stops. And when the block stops, the value of the velocity is going to be uh, zero. In this equation, I have only one unknown, which is S2. So I need to simplify that uh, formula here. Uh, then I'm going to use some math. I'm going to assume that uh, uh, S2 minus uh, 0 0.6 Assume this one is x. So I'm going to end up with uh, a quadratic equation. And in order to solve that, I need to uh, get the positive root and the negative root. And of course, I'm going to choose the positive root because the distance should be uh, positive. And the value of x came out to be 2.09. That means the value of s2 is going to be uh, 2.09 plus 0 0.6, which is 2.09. 69 meters. So now I'll be uh, able to determine the value of S2. So S2 is going to be measured from here. Initially, the block was at 0 0.6, and the block is going to stop at when uh, S is going to be 2.69. So uh, I'm going to give you the chance in order to ask questions. If you are uh, now let's move to example three. In example three, we have a building like you can see here. We have a brick here at position one. And initially at point uh, A, the velocity of the brick is 1.5 meter per second. So I have a brick moving with a velocity uh, equals 1.5 meter per second. It's going to slide along that roof. And the roof is smooth, it means that I don't have any friction. And uh, we need to determine the speed of the brick at the point B and the point C here. So first we need to determine the velocity 
of that brick at the uh, point B and then at point C. Again, since I have velocities and I have forces acting on the particles, then it's better to use the principle uh, of work and energy. So we are going to apply the principle of work and energy to the brick and determine the speeds at B and at C. So let's start with the speed at B. So I'm going to apply the equation of uh, uh, principle uh, of work and energy. I have TA and I have a submission of the work that has been uh, should be done between point A and point B and then the kinetic energy at B. Regarding the kinetic energy at A, it's going to be 1 over 2 times the mass times the velocity. The mass is 1. The mass is 1 kilograms. And the velocity is 1.2 squared. And regarding the uh, kinetic energy at B, I have 1 over 2 times the mass times the uh, uh, VB, which I don't know. I don't know the velocity here. Then I need to know the work done between uh, position A and position B. Here I don't have a spring and I don't have applied forces. I only I have uh, a work because of the weight of the brick. And uh, we know that the, the weight is going to act down. So I need to know the uh, uh, vertical displacement, which is here. The vertical displacement, like you can see here, is going to be 4.5 and it's acting downward. That means the uh, work is going to be positive because the weight is going to act down and the displacement here is, is down as well. So I'm going to have one time the gravity time the dy. Dy here is uh, downward. And since the dy is downward, that means the work is going to be positive. Now in this equation, I have uh, only VB, which I don't know, I can easily solve for VB. VB came out to be 9.515 uh, uh, 9 meter per second. That means the uh, uh, velocity of the brick is going to increase. In this point, it was 1.5, and in, th in that point here, it has it was 9.515. Uh, then I need to know the uh, velocity here. I can again also apply the principle of work and energy between B and C or between A and C. It will give you the same uh, answer. So uh, I'm going to uh, apply the principle of work and energy again between point A and point C. So TA is going to be the same here, no change in that equation regarding the work done. Again, the only forces, uh, the only force that is going to cause a work is the weight of the brick. I don't have applied forces, and also I don't have any, I don't have any spring here. And uh, uh, in that case, uh, I need to know the uh, dy. So if I'm going to use the uh, uh, principle of work and energy between A and B, the uh, dy is going to be 4.5 plus 9, which is 13.5. And like you can see here, dy is acting downward, not upward. That means the work done by the weight is going to be uh, positive. And so when I'm going to apply the uh, equation of the uh, work and energy, uh, this part is going to be as it is. This part, we are going to have different dy. Here I have 4.5, here I have 13.5. The mass is the same. Here I need to know the velocity at C. So I have only unknown. I'll be able to determine the value of VC. So the velocity of the brick when it's about to hit the ground is going to be 16.34 meter per second. So here initially the, the velocity it was 1.5 meter per second. Here the velocity it was 9.5, 9.515. And here, the velocity was 16.34 meter per second. So using the principle of work and energy, I can relate the velocity and the displacement and the uh, forces. 
So I'm going to stop here. If you have any uh, questions regarding this problem, uh, please ask.